Let's try to understand the beta sheet the same way. We already went through the components of the beta sheet and how this looked. This is going to be more complex for a number of reasons. It's a two-dimensional structure, and in contrast to that simple alpha helix, it's going to turn out that this is a proper phase transition. It can't really coexist. I'm also going to need to choose to study a particular case. So for now, I'm going to stick to the structure that we went through, this so-called anti-parallel helix. But you need to remember that there are more helices than anti-parallel ones. We can either organize them this way, anti-parallel, or we have the other alternative when they are parallel. But when they are parallel, we typically, when we get to the end of this helix, I need to have some other secondary structure element to get back to the start of the second sorry, not helix, to get back to this part of the second strand here. And those extra elements such as helices complicate things by an order of magnitude. So let's keep things reasonably simple at least and stick to this case. In particular, when I'm at the end of one strand here and then I need to quickly turn around and move to the other strand, it's going to be very useful to have those small glycine turns that I mentioned. So at the end of a beta strand, it's not just some sort of random quick turn, but usually a very well-defined structure with glycines and a hydrogen bond in the middle that really terminates the end of the helix. But still, why do I keep calling it helix? It's going to terminate the end of the beta strand. But it's still going to be unfavorable in terms of entropy, so we will be paying for that. The nice properties of beta sheets is that when we pair them up this way, they will frequently have, well, they will have all the amino acid sizes pointing out. And if I look at this from the side instead, do you see here that I have amino acids here and then I have amino acids here? And if you now pick amino acids with one property here and another property here, I have effectively created a divider here. A divider that will have property A here and property B here. And a very common such property is hydrophobicity. So if I take the sheets and make every single residue hydrophobic and every, sorry, every other residue hydrophobic and every other residue hydrophilic, I will effectively end up with a sheet that has one hydrophobic side and one hydrophilic side. If I then pick two sheets like this, I will end up with something like this. So this is something called the fatty acid binding protein that I will tell you more about later. But this is a small pocket, again an NMR structure. And here we've turned the two hydrophobic faces to the inside while the hydrophilic ones are exposed on the outside. And that, what that gives us is a small bag essentially in your cells where the outer so side here is soluble in water while the inner side, what do you think it binds? It's a fatty acid binding protein. So it binds hydrophobic fatty acids here. So that way we can transport fatty acids and later use them inside to build up the lipids and our cell membranes. I'll talk about that when it comes to membrane proteins. So just by using these simple building blocks and pairing up specific amino acids, I can create a specific property of a small protein and make it perform a function. But we'll talk more about that when I talk about proteins. For now on, we're going to try to determine how quickly the beta sheet folds.